June here in Anchorage, KONR listeners, and you know what that means. That's right, rain and rainbows. The diversity rainbow, that is. Out North has three pride events under our roof, and all three of those are free with no age limitations. First two events are on Wednesday, June 6th. First, Pride Parlay at 6 p.m., and will be an hour of poetry by a local and national gay artist. And then at 7 p.m., the documentary film On the Shoulders We Stand, an illuminating historical account of gay life and activism of Los Angeles before the New York City Stonewall riots that brought high visibility nationally to the cause. The film will be followed by conversation with the filmmaker and local activist. Again, the film is free with no age restrictions. But before all that, Out North will kick off Pride Week Friday, June 1st at 6.30 p.m. with Confessions of an Ex and Ex Gay by Jason Ingram. Jason toured many years with his show Identity Thieves, multimedia performance piece. He will be returning to Anchorage for the first time as an ex-gay, but presently he is here on the phone with me, phoning it in from Portland, Oregon. Hello, Welcome. Welcome. So, I um, feel welcome already. Well, you guys have, have really done a great job in helping to promote my event, and just I feel like you're rolling out the red carpet. Well, thank you, Mark, and thank you for all the music. We got those out on the air as we speak. We'll follow up this piece with uh, with a couple of them that you had selected for us. Great. You're originally from Anchorage, Jen? I lived there on and off for about 10 years. I'm originally from Portland, Oregon. And I came to Anchorage in 1994 when I was uh, almost 21 years old. Your piece speaks of being an ex-gay in Anchorage, and how does uh, how did that come to be? Well, I had uh, been involved in a lot of ministry work because after my conversion experience uh, when I first came to Alaska, uh, which was actually at the Anchorage Rescue Mission that summer of 1994, I uh, not only came to Christ but I came to Christian culture. And Christian culture has a reparative or a conversion-type stance on being gay or lesbian, bi, or trans, which is basically an anti-gay thing. And so I just heard years of anti-gay sermons. Even though I grew up in a very gay-friendly community, I began to have a, a real strong conviction against it. This was just in basic indoctrination by submersion in the anti-gay it wasn't a direct um, anti-gay or reprogramming type thing that happened here in Anchorage. Most of it was just simply going to church and hearing people talk, uh, talking about political action as far as, you know, what we did is, you know, conservative, right-wing uh, Christian people. Uh, you know, we tried to protect the family and or what we thought it was the family. And so we really thought we were doing the right thing by taking on issues like being anti-gay and trying to make things difficult for LGBT people and so on. This went on for how long? Well, I spent 12 years in these type of churches. And two of that I spent in Oklahoma going to a Bible school and going through ministerial training to be a pastor. Uh, I also spent uh, almost three months on the foreign mission field, and, and then when I came back to Alaska, I did a lot of traveling, did music ministry, youth ministry, uh, but it wasn't until 2000, really going into 2001, where I had really gotten hurt by some things that happened with some church leaders, and I just couldn't quite repress my feelings anymore about being gay and started looking into it, and right away, I wanted to stop. I wanted to seek some quantic, quote, help to try to not be gay. You had been submersed in it so long that once you tried to rectify all your mixed feelings, then you made a conscious choice for yourself to, to not be gay? Yes, this was something I really believed that in order to please God and in order to be in God's will, that I was to either be celibate or marry a woman and have that strict sexual view that, that was given to me in order to feel like I could be a real Christian, and especially, and here's the kicker, <laughs> have a career in the church, too, because they, they tend to look down on single people. Uh, of course, they look down on gays a lot. And uh, even ex-gays, I found that when I got involved in the ex-gay movement, I had less and less opportunities to do music ministry. And, of course, they didn't want me around the teenagers because there's that prejudice, too. 
did you approach the church for help, or did you go outside the church to, or did you search for help? Oh yes, I'm very good at looking for help. <laughs> so I'm sort of a needy person. I live with a mental illness, and so I thought maybe I'll seek help because I was going through some mood swings, a huge depression, and I wasn't getting anywhere. It was very expensive, and I finally found a Christian ministry that did sort of a prayer-based type counseling, and the the gay issues kept coming up, and so we focused on that, and I wasn't getting anywhere, so I started looking into other groups, and, you know, I would talk to a lot of pastors and minister friends because I knew a lot of ministers, but really the, the kind of, you know, consistent help that I felt like I could get was from counseling groups and also men's groups. The uh, help that you were seeking, was it specifically to end your gayness or just trying to rectify just all the mixed feelings in you? Oh, at first I was trying to figure out, like, was I sexually abused? Why do I feel this way? Is it because I grew up in a liberal family? I have LGBT people in my immediate family, and, you know, I was just confused. I thought maybe I chose this. And then I was told that there's some kind of generational curse, so we would go through these long, long, elaborate prayers, breaking off all these things spiritually from my life that I thought were there. And it was just sort of this never-ending, you know, this wouldn't work, so I would go and try this group, and I would try to do this type of therapy and this and, and that. What was the turning point as far as you taking peer through your uh, websites and all? You still have faith, so you haven't walked away from the church entirely, per se. So wh where what was the turning point then? Well, the turning point was things just got absolutely ridiculous, um, absolutely destroying my life. I was so obsessed with the ex-gay movement, with going to group after group, I left Alaska, sold my business, and, you know, a professional musician selling his musical instruments, you got to know I was really committed to this thing. And uh, I found a place in Kentucky that was the most affordable, the most reasonable it sounded like. There was another fellow from Anchorage that had gone into this um, group for some other issues, and it was just a men's sexual, sexual addiction living program, a residential program out there near Cincinnati, Ohio, and I flew in and um, spent my last dollar, basically. It was, it was very expensive, but not as much as uh, the other programs that are specifically ex-gay were thousands and thousands of dollars that I did not have and I couldn't raise. So, so when I finally had spent everything I had, I couldn't make any friends. The people that I knew that were trying to be an ex-gay were just a mess. They were pulling me down. I just saw that it was ruining people's lives ruining my own. I was trying to support myself working nights in a factory, and with an untreated mental illness, I started having a breakdown. And uh, I started seeking after men again, and right away, this was the wild part, was I meet this Christian man in northern Kentucky, and we fell in love. Who would have thought? 